Ubisoft has released 69 operators over the past eight years, Siege has been out, all with their own unique gadgets and weaponry that can be used to counter each other. To be good at Siege, you need to understand how to go against each operator and how to deal with each of their own unique gadgets. So in today's video, I'll be showing you how to counter every defender in Rainbow Six Siege. Timestamps for every operator will be in the description. So if you need to learn how to counter one specific operator, just go click the link down in the description. Now to start the video, we have Smoke. Smoke is not a very straightforward operator to counter due to his gadget being a toxic smoke grenade, but there are still a couple of ways you can do so. Obviously, killing him will completely shut down his ability to use his smokes later in the round, but this isn't that simple since most smoke players will play extremely safe on a power position. So the easiest and best way to deal with a pesky smoke player is to just bait out his smoke canisters. By applying the pressure on the smoke, eventually he will need to use his canisters. You can accomplish this by using smoke grenades, flashbangs, and things like it to make smoke think you're about to execute. Then you can just wait out the impending canister he throws your way. Additionally, if you find yourself against him in the late game, faking the plant can accomplish this exact same goal. Moving on to Mute, he is much easier to counter due to his gadget being electronic. Typically, you'll see Mute players place their jams around doorways and drone holes in and around the bomb site. The best way to get rid of them is EMPs. Impact EMPs can do a great job of clearing jams off of a doorway so that you can continue your droning shenanigans. However, this does require you to be pretty close to the doorway you're trying to use your EMP on. So, if you want an even more effective counter, Thatcher is the perfect guy for the job. Just throw his EMPs in the general direction of where the Mute Jammer is at, and you'll disable any jammers in your way. You may also disable other Defender gadgets as well, which is a pretty nice plus. After Mute, we have a much easier operator to counter, Castle. Castle's entire job is to cut off the attacker's line of sight. The best way to open back up those lines of sight is to bring Sledge. Sledge's hammer can bash any of Castle's barricades down with a single swing, making him a clearly efficient choice for dispatching Castle's barricades. However, you don't even have to pick Sledge. Any sort of explosives will make for an effective way to destroy his barricades. Ash, Zofia, and Flores all come to mind as viable explosive options, but your mileage may vary when it comes to their effectiveness compared to Sledge. As for Pulse, he is another complicated operator to deal with since his gadget basically gives him wall hacks. The main way to deal with him is to just clear him out early in the round. A lot of the time, Fuse will play below the bomb site, waiting for his moment to nitro the planter. If you and your team focus on surrounding and clearing him out, you will prevent him from carrying out his strategy. However, this does require your team to focus on him. You might be better off just ignoring him and planting on an indestructible surface. This is a risky move though, and you could lose the round because of this choice, so the option is completely up to you. The next operator, Rook, is a much more straightforward operator to counter. All you have to do is hit your headshots. What good does extra health do when you just one shot everyone you see? I know it may sound like I'm joking, but seriously, you can't do anything about Rook outside of that. Just hit the head and you'll be fine. Rook's big brother tells a very similar story. Doc is a healing operator, so his gadget relies on you hitting your opponents in the body and you allowing them to walk away from the encounter so Doc can heal them. I hate for me to say just get good because I know that's what this sounds like, but you realistically can't stop Doc from healing someone unless you just stop them from making it to Doc in the first place. If you need help doing this, just spend a lot of time in the shooting range and eventually you'll be popping heads like no tomorrow. Once you start hitting your headshots, Doc will no longer be useful. Now our next operator, Capcan, is actually an operator that has multiple straightforward counters. The first being just to drone doorways. If you make sure to check doorways before entering when a cap can is on the board, it will quite literally be impossible to die to his traps. However, we have all misdroned his traps before and we all know how time consuming this can be. So a faster solution for you could be IQ. She can find all of Capcan traps at the start of the round and call out their location. Additionally, she can go below to shoot the traps through the floor if they are on soft surfaces. Overall, whether you want to commit an entire operator to counter Capcan is up to you and your team, but she is a viable operator if you want to make that commitment. As for Tachanka, he is a very similar operator to Smoke in the sense that he excels in area denial and late game scenarios. So the best way to counter him is to not let him survive until that in game. Using operators like Flores, Capitao, or any operators with nades to clear Chanka out of his pesky power positions would be ideal. However, you might not even need to do this. At the time of recording, despite all of his buffs, his fire is still painfully weak, allowing you to walk straight through it. Literally brute forcing your way through a Tachanka will work a lot more than you think, especially since I could go AFK and make a sandwich by the time he's able to pull out his LMG again. But after Tachanka, Jaeger is a pretty straightforward operator to counter. He is typically used as a way to protect hard utility, meaning things like deployable shields, maestro cameras, banshees, and other gadgets of the like. So if you want to get rid of that utility, you can use Flores to just bypass his ADSs altogether and it gets straight to the important stuff. 
But if you need to get rid of Jaeger's ADS specifically, EMPs, switch drones, or other electronic counters can be used to get rid of his ADSs outright. But if you prefer to not bring an operator targeted for the job, just bringing a ton of flashbangs, smokes, and other projectiles to burn the ADSs will be enough to get whatever you need through Jaeger's protection. Next up for Bandit, the way you counter him is going to depend on the strategy the enemy is deploying around him. If Bandit is just placing his batteries down on a wall, you can easily deal with them with any form of EMPs Team Rainbow can offer. However, if he is bandit tricking, this is where things get difficult. The best way to deal with a pesky bandit tricker is a well-timed Zofia stun. If you and a hard breacher time it right, you can use your Zofia stuns to cancel bandit's battery placing animation, allowing you to get the wall completely open. However, if this doesn't work, playing vertically on bandit and forcing him off of the wall can be a way more effective option, but it can be slightly more time consuming, which is why I recommend trying to use Zofia stuns first and foremost. Now, when talking about Frost, she is actually pretty straightforward to deal with. Just like Capcan, the best way to deal with her is to use that drone in your pocket. If you drone under windows and up staircases, you can ensure that you won't get caught off guard by an unsuspecting frost bat. But you can also just look down and shoot when vaulting a window and you'll destroy her traps anyway. So if you don't have the time to drone, this will work just as well. Just make sure there are no defenders around to swing you. As for Valkyrie, she is one of the strongest operators in the game. So obviously you'll want to know how to counter her. The easiest way to get rid of her cameras is to bring an IQ. IQ can see all of her cams through walls, allowing her to call them out to the team and even destroy them herself through floors. This is one of the few times where picking IQ is actually worth it in my opinion, because dealing with a Valk that has well hidden placements can be extremely difficult. An IQ to dispatch those cameras rather quickly and can save your team a lot of time. Now, Kavera is an interesting one because her entire gadget revolves around sneaking up behind your team. She also relies heavily on your team not droning to accomplish this. So realistically, just droning together with your team and executing an effective roam clear is good enough to counter Cav. But if you want to make this process easier, you can bring a Lion. If you drone out Kavera, you can immediately pop one of Lion's E1Ds. That way, if Cav tries to run away, her location is revealed. But if she stays still, you'll obviously know her location. So it's a win-win situation for you. By using this strategy, the amount of time you'll spend on roam clearing Kavera will be cut in half, I guarantee. Moving to Echo, he is in the same situation as Valkyrie. His gadget is entirely revolved around grabbing intel and denying the plant later in the round. To counter this, you can either bring IQ to see his yokai drones through walls like with Valk cams, or you can do the easier and less time consuming strategy of just bringing Thatcher. This revolves around you waiting until you go for a plant, then when Echo inevitably tries to move his drones towards your planter, you can just throw an EMP directly onto the bomb site. This will disable all of Echo's drones, allowing you to get the plant down without even having to worry about his drones, which is less time consuming and more convenient than any other counter. After Echo, we have Mira, one of the most annoying operators to deal with on defense. Now the obvious counter to Mira is Twitch, since her drones can easily pop the canister of her windows, ruining whatever plans Mira might have. However, this counter is so common that most good Mira players will expect it and will likely be on the lookout. So I think the most consistent way to deal with her is vertical play. If her mirror windows are above or below a soft surface, you can go below, cook a nade, and absolutely wreck Mira before she can react. You can also do this with Buck Shotgun if you prefer that method as well. This is the most effective strat since it allows you to kill Mira on top of clearing her windows off of the map, which is a huge plus. Now for Legion, he is an interesting one to say the least. This is because Legion's goos are no longer invisible, making it easier to deal with them now as long as you are paying attention. But if you really want a hard counter, IQ can deal with his goos easily, just like she can any other trap operator. Her gadget will allow her to see all of his goos through all surfaces, allowing her to call them out to the team and also get rid of them. However, just droning will be good enough to accomplish this goal if you don't want to run a specific operator. And me personally, I would much rather drone out his goos than waste an operator slot on someone like IQ just to counter Legion's goos. As for Ella, she is another trap operator that has very similar counters as Legion and Capcat. IQ once again works with her, but I think this is a waste of a pick to deal with three traps. However, an operator that can be fun to use against Ella is Finca. Finca can get rid of all the effects of a Grismont with a click of a button basically rendering Ella's mines completely useless. This can be extremely useful for rush strategies against Ella. However, just droning once again is a great way to detect and deal with Ella's mines. I, I know I keep saying just drone, but it's true. A lot of the time dealing with defender gadgets just requires a decent amount of droning and some explosives. After Ella, we have Vigil, a hardcore roaming operator that has a kit built for the job. Dealing with this can feel very overwhelming since his gadget completely denies any drone work you might would want to do. So 
Countering this is going to need someone who doesn't need to drone. And that, my friends, is Jackal. Since Jackal's gadget allows him to ping defenders by scanning their feet, he can track Vigil without having to drone him out. And since Vigil has no way to prevent himself from leaving footprints, he can't counter this in any way. However, keep in mind that Vigil will know your location when you ping him, since the number of pings is based on how far away you are from him. So be wary. You want to work together with your team to take advantage of Jackal's pings, because going in solo can get you killed. Now, Maestro is the exact opposite of Vigil. His entire role is to set up in the bomb site and sit on his cameras the entire game. To deal with his cameras, bringing Flores can allow you to easily deal with his cameras without risking your life or having to deal with any ADSs. Additionally, bringing impact EMPs can also allow you to accomplish the same goal. But this does leave you open to dying or being countered by Jaeger's ADSs, so your mileage may vary with this. However, another important part to mention about Maestro is his clutch ability in the late game. His LMG absolutely shreds and has a near bottomless mag. This makes him a menace in a clutch situation. To deal with the situation that I'm sure we all fear, you need to coordinate with your team and stop taking ones against him. If you force him to take two fights at once, he will have a much harder time rolling your entire team. I know Maestro does have a better weapon than 90% of the operators in the game, but you're just gonna have to be the better player and win your gunfight. As for Alibi, she is a weird one to say the least. Her gadget entirely revolves around you making a mistake and shooting her clones. The only way to really counter her is to just stop shooting her clones. If you and your team keep up with Alibi's location and call it out, you'll prevent yourself from shooting her clones on accident. Additionally, if you just drone the location of all of her clones early in the round, you can prepare yourself for the clones beforehand and stop yourself from shooting them. Realistically, picking an operator just to counter Alibi is just not worth it. You just need to spend your time droning properly so that way you don't make the mistake of shooting her clones. Clash is an operator you are all likely going to find annoying. And if you want to know how to counter her, you've come to the right place. Countering her is obviously going to take a lot of coordination from your team. But I find the most effective way to deal with her is to bring a Zofia and have her stun clash. And while her shield is knocked away, have a teammate shoot at her feet. This can be a difficult thing to pull off, but it is by far the most effective strategy. If you don't want to use Zofia, using EMPs instead to disable her shield can also work. But if she has any resemblance of a team around her, they will stop you from rushing class if you try this. So by far the most consistent and effective option is to bring Zofia. Now, Cade is one of the strongest operators in the game for denying your team access to a wall. So dealing with him is going to be massively important for nearly any attack you plan on accomplishing. Countering Cade comes down to droning out the locations of his Electro Claws and throwing impact EMPs on their locations through a wall. This will work 90% of the time unless they have a mute to deny your drone access, which if they do, picking a Thatcher will be more effective and less time consuming since you just can throw his EMPs and not even think about it. As for Mozzie, his entire job is to counter your drone work and to turn some of your drones against your team. If you notice the enemy team has a Mozzie during the prep phase, Calling this out to your team and driving your drones back into spawn will prevent Mozzie from getting free drones early in the round. Then once the action phase begins, as long as you are on the lookout when going through doorways, upstairs, and through drone holes, you can prevent your drone from getting hacked. However, this won't allow you to get your drone past this pest. It will just prevent them from getting hacked. To accomplish this, EMPs, explosives, or just shooting the pest can all allow you to get your drone past depending on the position of said pass. So realistically, picking an operator specifically for countering Mozzie is just kind of a waste of time. You can just use one EMP impact, or realistically, you can just peek the corner and shoot the Mozzie pest if you really need to get a drone by. People who pick Warden are only picking him for the 1.5 and nothing more. You'll see clips all of the time online of people completely forgetting about his gadget. But if you're really still worried about dealing with Warden, just avoid using smoke grenades or flashbangs while he is still alive. This will just stop Warden from being capable of getting any utility out of his gadget, and it will ensure that any gunfight you get in with Warden will be a fair one-on-one -on -one gunfight. Outside of that, just winning your gunfights is the only way to really deal with a Warden. Goyo is another operator that is incredibly strong for aerial denial that gets even stronger the later in the game you go. By far, Goyo's best counter is Twitch. Driving your drone into the bomb site at some point early in the round can allow you to explode all of his canisters preemptively before the late game comes around. This will allow you to plant later in the game without having to worry about him delaying your push at all. And this is a huge way to counter Goyo and it's by far the most effective strategy I've seen. As for Omai, he is an operator entirely dedicated to denying your team's use of projectiles. However, since Wamai earns his Magnus slowly throughout the round, this opens Wamai up to being countered just by dying early. If you and your team can manage to kill Wamai early, you will have to deal with a lot less of his Magnets lying around. Now, if this task is too difficult, which most of the time it is, bringing a lot of burn can also solve this issue. Flashbangs, smokes, and stuns can all burn through Wamai's Magnets, allowing you to get more important projectiles through his net. 
flashbang smokes and stuns can all burn through Wamai's magnets allowing you to get more important projectiles through even an operator like grim since he has so many bees can allow your team to just brute force their way through Wamai's protective net this is going to be the most consistent and risk-free strategy for dealing with Wamai especially compared to trying to kill him early on. Oryx is another operator with an ability that entirely revolves around the roam game. He can ram through walls, jump up hatches, and run away extremely fast. So, how are you supposed to keep an operator like that boxed in? Well, the best way to shut down his roam game is to bring a lion in your lineup. As mentioned earlier, Lion's Gadget combined with good drone work can deny any movement evasion that Oryx tries to pull off. This is because Lion's E1D will ping him every step of the way if he tries to escape. This combined with good teamwork and coordination will help you deal with anything the enemy Oryx tries to throw at you. Moving to Malusi, she is an operator that can be extremely strong for slowing or even stopping your team's aggression. One of my favorite ways to deal with this is to bring Brava. Brava's clutch drones, as you likely know, can hack defender electronics, meaning you can flip any defender gadget onto your own team. And this is where Malusi comes in. Since Malusi's banshees are electronic, Brava's drones can flip them to the attacking side, which is a massive deal. This will force the defenders to waste explosives to deal with their own banshees, or they'll be forced to avoid the areas the banshees are placed in. Either way, this is a huge win for the attack, and it will make your site execute much easier. Aruni is an operator that fills a very similar role to Jaeger Levi. She is mainly used as a nade denial operator, but she can also deny entry into certain doorways or windows. So how do you go about dealing with her? Well, just like Malusi, her gadget is electronic, meaning that Brava can also hack her gates, which this can be a huge asset to your team if you can get a hold of some of them. But you don't have to pick a specific operator to deal with her gates. Any sort of burn like flashbang, smokes, or stuns will disable Aruni's gates with ease, allowing you to walk straight through. Either one of these counters will work extremely well. Me personally, I like to bring Brava against Aruni just because I think it's fun, but either one will work extremely well. Now, Thunderbird, like all of the other healing operators in this video, is really not an operator you need to be worried about countering. If you find yourself going against Thunderbird, just hitting headshots and winning your gunfights will stop her gadget outright from getting any utility. But outside of that, you can't really do much because her gadget isn't really countered by anything other than like maybe explosives or something like that. But it's not worth destroying her gadget considering her own Kona stations can work for your team as well. Now, Thorn is in a very similar situation as Warden. Most people are only picking her for the 1.5 right now, and it's kind of sad to see. Her traps just really aren't that great or anything to worry about. But if a specific counter is really needed, Brava can be a good operator for the job since her gadget can take control of Thorn's gadget and use them against her. Additionally, just droning for traps preemptively can save you the hassle of wasting a pick just to counter Thorn. Azami is probably one of, if not the most oppressive operator in the entire game because of the sheer amount of utility she brings to the team. So countering her is going to be a must. The best way to do this is to bring tons of explosive utility. Operators like Flores, Ash, Zofia, and Kali are all surprisingly great choices for destroying Azami's pesky Kibas. However, just like Wamai and Legion, Azami gets her Kibas slowly over time, meaning that killing her early in the round is a must to minimize the utility she can get out of her gadget. This can be difficult to do, which I acknowledge, but if you can pull it off, you'll save yourself a lot of utility. Like Azami, Solace is one of the most oppressive operators in Siege. Her uncanny ability to shut down drone work is unprecedented, especially compared to other roamers. So how do you deal with this? Well, bringing an IQ can allow you to see Solace through walls when she activates her gadget, which can be useful for calling out her location to the team. If you use IQ throughout the round to harass Solace, it can make her life much more difficult. However, Solace can see IQ through walls as well, so she will be aware of what's going on. Additionally, picking operators like Jackal to help you roam clear her early in the round can be a smart move as well. But when picking Jackal, do be careful because Solace can see him through walls when his goggles are on, so you will have to be pretty safe when playing him. Now for the final and most recent defender, we have Fenrir. Fenrir can be a nuisance to deal with considering how deadly his smoke can be. However, the best way to deal with him is to just drone. Fenrir thrives when the attackers don't drone. His gadget kind of relies on it. This is because if you drone out his traps, you can just shoot them through the floor or just use explosives to get rid of them or EMPs to disable them. There are so many ways to deal with Fenrir's f knots as long as you just drone them out. Also, you can bring operators like Twitch or Brava to destroy and call them out all in one convenient package. So if you find yourself dying to Fenrir a lot, just take your time and drone out his traps. Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. As you can tell, I put a lot of effort into this video. So if this video helped you out at all, please consider subscribing and following me on Twitter if you don't want to miss the next upload. If you want to see more of me, go follow me on Twitch because I'll be going live roughly six hours after this video goes up 
and hopefully I'll see you there. Also, if you want to see yourself in new videos or streams, join up in the Discord. I want to get active over there, so don't be afraid to join up. I'm sure we'll have some amazing fun. Now, if you want to watch another video just like this one, I'll be popping up on your screen right now where I show you how to counter every attacker in Rainbow Six Siege. I'll see you next time, friends, and peace.